Hi, welcome and thank you for joining us today. I'm Nick Yap, your caring pharmacist and host for today. Uh, we want to talk about kidney and diabetes today because we know everyone went all out eating during the Raya holidays. You know, we are truly Satu Malaysia, Keluarga Malaysia when it comes to Raya holiday. Muslims eat, non-Muslims also eat, and worst of all, uh, Muslims puasa then eat, the non-Muslims don't puasa also they eat. So you know, this is the reason for uh, all, uh, all Malaysians and everyone to be very cautious of you know, diabetes and also their yeah, kidney issues. Oh. So, if you have concerns about your sugar levels, uh, lepas makan baru risau. So, tak payah risau, jangan risau. Uh, our guest today is Associate Professor and Consultant Nephrologist from University Malaya who has extensive research and working experience in this field. Uh, also, we will be having a surprise giveaway for six lucky winners during this session. So, uh, you still have time to call up your friends and family to join this live stream now. Uh, without further ado, let us welcome our guest for today, Dr. Wan Ahmad Hafiz. Hi, Dr. Hello, hello, Nick. How are you? Good, good, good. So um, it's really a pleasure to be seeing you, seeing you here today because Thank of you. it's after Raya, right? After Raya, everyone ate a lot. So, um, but before starting, we want to talk about your role. So, Dr. Juna, I introduce you as a consultant nephrologist. Mm -hmm. So. Um, do you see a spike in diabetes or kidney problems after Raya? You know, they say, oh, no, lepas Raya, COVID will naik. So, lepas Raya, masalah gula ada naik tak? Uh, yeah, certainly, Nick. Um, because I think during Raya time, and this happens all over the world during Christmas time, people tend to kind of, uh, you know, it's Raya time, so I don't want to go to the hospital yet. Let me kind of uh, enjoy my Raya first. And then only after Raya, they go to the hospital with all sorts of complications. So yes, yeah, we, so do, a lot, we do see the spike, yeah. And a lot also like, never mind the Raya, right? I eat first, I will take care later. All right, Raya is the, is the, no, is the, no, uh, out of, yeah, uh, no, yeah, out of the jail. Two years cannot time. Raya, Nick. So this is the time yeah, they want uh, to enjoy Raya. So, so. eat first, we saw Bimbang Nanti. <laughs> so um, I think a lot of audiences, uh, they, they are still a bit confused on what uh, a consultant nephrologist like you do. Uh, many patients go like, hey, you know, saya ada masalah kencing lah, uh, nak jumpa nephrologist ke urologist, apakah beza dia? So, uh, do you mind sharing with us a bit on your day-to-day -day task as a nephrologist? Uh, thank you, Nick. Um, so, I think uh, it's always confusing. Uh, nephrologist is a kidney doctor, urologist is a kidney doctor as well. But urologist, they are the surgeon, they are the one who cut things up, you know, look after your prostate, remove your kidney. While as a nephrologist like me, uh, we do see patients, so usually we deal with patients who need dialysis. So that's our bulk of the job that we see. But we also deal with somebody who has SLE, who has um, affected their kidney, those who have uh, blood in the urine, protein in the urine, and so on and so forth. Um, so that's generally what nephrology do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Before we proceed with our discussion, be sure uh, to stay tuned until the end of the webinar because we will be having a giveaway for six lucky winners with the most accurate answer to stand a chance to win, carrying cash voucher worth 50 ringgit each. So, lima ringgit, uh, lima puluh ringgit, bukan lima ringgit. Lima puluh ringgit tu, tak jawab rugi tu. Huh? So, uh, our topic for today is post riot edition. Watch out for diabetes and kidney diseases. So, let's dive right in. Doctor, can you explain what diabetes is and how prevalent it is in Malaysia? Um, yes, I think most of our audience would know what is diabetes. But if I could recap, diabetes is a condition when our blood sugar in our system is high. And that's because our body could not process the sugar. And that can be either because... So when we eat, uh, uh, there's a lot of sugar coming into our body. So our body uh, 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 detect it. And then they start secreting insulin. So our body start producing insulin to counter the high sugar. So in somebody with diabetes, actually, it's either because their insulin is not enough to counter that high blood sugar after eating, or uh, basically they have a good amount of insulin, but somehow the body cannot, could, not, could not recognize it. So yes, so diabetes is a condition when our blood sugar is high in our body. Uh, as regard to the prevalent, prevalent is how many patients or how many people actually has diabetes in certain certain places. So in Malaysia, so if we could go to the slides. So in Malaysia, we actually have what we call a survey every five years or so. And the last survey was in 2019. This is when they do go house to house, uh, collecting thousands of data, uh, checking people's sugar and blood and blood pressure 
And from there, they know in 2019, our prevalence of diabetes is about 18%. So that's roughly about one in five, like what the, the, the videos were showing initially. So uh, the hypertension is about one in three, while the CKD or kidney disease is about one in seven. So again, diabetes is about 18% of patients. 18% uh, 80, 80 of people in Malaysia has diabetes. But if you look at a different uh, ethnicity and different ages, you can see a lot more kind of a detailed data. So you can see in ethnicity, uh, uh, people of Indian origin has a higher chance to get diabetes somehow. And uh, from the age point of view, you can see the older you are, the more likely that you have diabetes. For example, if you are 60 years, 40% of people would have diabetes. So really, uh, we need to be aware of this. Back to you, Nick. I, but I think one thing that I don't expect is that there is actually quite a lot of people who are having kidney diseases. We, we don't expect that the number of people having kidney disease is actually close to those people who are having diabetes. We thought that you know kidney problem is quite an isolated problem. But when we're looking at the graph just now only, then we know actually a lot of people are having kidney disease. Um, so uh, now that we know what diabetes is, uh, what is the cause for diabetes and you know, who among us uh, is gonna possibly at risk? So th there are two questions there, Nick. What, uh, who, uh, what, who among us um, oh, can who get who diabetes? Us, yeah, can yeah? Get um, and then another risk. one is, the first one is? Uh, the cause of diabetes. What the cause the of diabetes. Cause? Yeah, the cause of diabetes, diabetes is, is a bit um, uh, uh, peculiar because we all know there's a type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. And type 1 usually affecting more of a younger generation, children, uh, teens, while type 2 diabetes affecting more of an adult population. Although nowadays, there are a lot more type 2 diabetes um, uh, uh, children nowadays compared to what, what it was previously. Um, so yeah, type 1, the causes is autoimmune. Somehow the immune system just attack your pancreas, which produces the insulin, and, and then your insulin cannot be produced. Hence, that's why type 1 diabetes, they need insulin to replace the the, the pancreas that cannot produce insulin. While type 2 diabetes is more of a, you know, associated with obesity, the, the, the body cannot regulate the insulin, although they do have insulin. Uh, so those who are at risk of diabetes, so let's bring up the slide. So there are many. So technically, if, if people have any medical problem that is associated with heart problem or diabetes, uh, diabetes for example, if you have family history of diabetes, if you are overweight with hypertension, with kidney problem, uh, women who during their pregnancy has a, a condition called gestational diabetes, meaning their blood sugar is high during diabetes only, uh, during pregnancy only. Uh, and these people, they are really at high risk um, of getting diabetes. Uh, I remember when I was learning, uh, not sure whether is, is the statistic is true or is getting worse. Uh, women who have gestational diabetes, the risk of them getting diabetes is like 50% in five years. So that's pretty significant. Mm -hmm. okay. But um, regarding all this kind of diabetes, I think a lot of patients that we see, they most of them, they don't really know about you know type 1 diabetes. So I think it's good for doctors to mentioning about you know diabetes as actually type 1 and type 2, what is the cause and then you know what is the you know, common age group that is, that is kind of associated with it. Um, so now that we know what are the causes for diabetes and you know, what are what are the risk factors for diabetes uh, so doctor what are the common diabetic symptoms because a lot of people they are worried you know oh, might i be having diabetes but at the same time they don't know whether they have it because they don't feel anything yet i think the video during the starting time i think it's the same thing they a, a lot of people they don't feel anything so that is one of the main problem with diabetes so if they were to feel any symptoms what kind of symptoms you know so are we going to expect uh, thank you, Nick. Uh, common question. So what do you think? Uh, you remember when you're learning as a, <laughs> before this? Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit, um, what you call it? It's a bit uh, technical term now. Uh, polypegia, poly, polyuria, polydipsia. So you're right. So poly means plenty. Poly means plenty. So uh, People who have a frank diabetes, frank means, you know, they, they really have diabetes. Usually they would have a thirst because they are losing a lot of fluid because in, in, their, in their body, they have a lot of blood sugar. When you have high blood sugar, you tend to get rid of those sugar 
in your urine. So that makes you pee or that makes you pass urine, a lot of urine every day. And that makes you thirsty and hence you need to drink more. So polyuria means you pass a lot of urine and polydipsia meaning you have to drink plenty. Those are the uh, signs that you may have or symptoms that you may have diabetes. Uh, losing weight may be a um, uh, losing weight uh, may be a sign that you have um, uh, uh, type 1 diabetes uh, for children and uh, gaining weight and obesity may be associated with um, uh, diabetes of type 2 diabetes. If we can put up the slides. Um, uh, so if I mention diabetes, we also have other things like hypertension, high cholesterol, kidney disease. And of course, if you look at the internet, you Google it, they always come up with symptoms like, you know, if you have high blood pressure, ada pening kepala, sakit kepala lah, headache, neck pain, um, only then you think that you have diabetes. Uh, and kidney disease, people think that when you have confusion, uh, 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 vomiting, flank pain, only then you, that means you have kidney disease. But what we have learned from the video, Nick, uh, that all these actually, there are a lot of patients who does not know that they have all these problems, diabetes. So the, the, the survey that I was mentioning to you in 2019, more than 50% of patients actually does not know that they have a diabetes. More than 70% of patients, they don't know that they have a kidney disease. So imagine that. So even though we can rely on these symptoms, but still those who are at a high risk, they have a family history of kidney problem, they have a family history of diabetes, they should go to the doctor and check their blood. Um, so yes, so that's my message. Yeah. So uh, now that we know what are symptoms, you know, if they were to feel any, uh, what are the complications? I think it's the same as the video that is mentioned. A lot of people only know about amputation. You know, gula tinggi potong kaki, gula tinggi potong kaki, right? This is what they know. But there's actually a lot of different complications for no diabetes. So, doctor, can you let us know what are the, the other you know, complications involved? Uh, yeah, you're right. Potong kaki is one of the major complications of diabetes. And I think the reason why uh, patients are looking at the potong kaki more often because that's what's visible. You know, having mm. an eye problem like the patient, the video was saying, you know, people cannot see. Potong kaki, immediately people know that that's because of something. So that's how visually uh, uh, distracting diabetes is. Uh, I know that uh, if I put up the slides, there are a lot of complications of diabetes. Uh, and people sometimes can be, you know, overwhelmed with a lot of complication. And there's no denying that, that it is. So the slides will show you that there are four, four common complications of diabetes that I think everybody should know. Number one is a heart problem. Okay. Uh, number two is a kidney problem. They, those are common as well. Number three is an eye problem. And number four is a leg problem. So all these four are the most common complication of diabetes. Now, if you want to expand that, the diabetes can affect because diabetes can affect your blood vessels and blood vessels are everywhere. So you can have a stroke, you can have a, you know, blood supply to the legs and not enough, blood supply to the eyes, not enough, uh, uh, blood supply to the kidneys, not enough, and all sorts of things. Um, but the, again, the four main complications are the kidneys, the heart, the eyes, and the legs. Okay, so uh, before moving on, I'd like to stop doctor for a while because this will be the time for the first round of giveaway for the uh, 50 ringgit cash voucher so this is the giveaway the question is uh, is kidney damage one of the diabetes related complications uh, yes or no it's quite a simple question let me, let me repeat is kidney damage one of the diabetes related complications yes or no okay comment your answer in the comment section and three lucky audiences will be selected after the live stream session to win carrying cash voucher worth 50 ringgit each uh, do remember to like caring pharmacy facebook page like and share this live stream and tag three friends or family together with your answer in the comment section to increase your chances of winning so with the advertisement aside so let's continue doctor <laughs> so for diabetic or hypertensive patients as you have mentioned they are the one at a high risk of you know getting kidney problems so what do they need to do in order to wash out for kidney disease yeah. were you giving answer just now to the question nick <laughs> Oh, was I? Was I? Oh, I hope they did not hear anything. <laughs> no, you did mentioned that. Uh, your question oh, now no. is uh, the answer of oh, the previous question. It's okay, it's okay. It's a, but anyway, it's a, it's a so, free, uh, question again, sorry, sorry, I, I missed that. <laughs> okay, the question is, you know, uh, for those who are 
diabetic or hypertension or those who have uh, who have that hypertension we know that these are the risk factor for diabetes uh, for the kidney disease so uh, knowing that so what can they do if uh, they have diabetes they have hypertension what can they do to wash out for kidney disease all right okay uh, thank you nick so kidney disease is a sensitive issue because i think based on our experience every time patient or patient do the blood test and they notice that you know it says they're stage three or stage four chronic kidney disease immediately they thought about dialysis okay uh, not necessarily so if i could say that you know like i said just now kidney disease is one of the main uh, complication of diabetes and hypertension and 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 it takes a while actually for diabetes to cause all this complication so sometimes it takes years for the complication to happen the problem is those who were diagnosed with diabetes type 2 let's say at 30 years old or 40 years old they realize that they have diabetes because of medical checkup now most of these patients they actually have diabetes for a number of years already without them knowing so the complication may have happened by the time they know it already so that's one of the problem that we have uh, if you can put up the slides so one of the way to know that somebody has um a kidney problem there are three things um uh, this can be done easily at a gp uh, or at certain other places so number one is you do the blood test number two you do your urine test and of course the third one is optional uh, not necessarily you need to do it but imaging test so imaging in the sense of doing ultrasound to see whether your kidney has stone um, uh, um if you have any uh, cysts or uh, things like that most of the time the imaging would not pick up many things uh, but it's one of the completion factor uh, but the two main thing is a blood test and the urine test blood test i think most people if you are familiar with blood test you have all sorts of tests right uh, one of the thing that you want to look at is the creatinine level which uh, they will usually show egfr or um, estimated glomerular filtration rate um, so yes um, those are the things that you 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 can see um, uh, and 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 the if you do the blood test they will kind of show i know this is technical a little bit uh, but if your egfr is less than 60 that means it's uh, as if that your kidney is working less than 60 percent and that is when we say you do have kidney problem uh, as to the urine test okay uh, generally even if your kidney function is normal if you do a urine test and it shows up that you have protein or you have blood that means you may have kidney problem as well so it's not enough to check the blood only you need to check the urine as well for, especially for diabetes most of the time in the early phase the blood test may be completely normal but then they may have a little bit of a protein um, itself and the way to do this protein check you can go to the gp check the protein and sometimes it shows you have a bit of protein um, i think uh, in this session we do have a test where it's very sensitive uh, whereby if you even if your usual dipstick that you do at gp did not show any protein but this very sensitive protein test if it's positive that means you are at a higher risk to develop a kidney problem heart problem and so on and so forth I think it's a good point from from doctor mentioning about this protein test or you know in this case we call it a micro test i think this test i think from what doctor mentioned i think it's a good thing we know that it is a very sensitive it is a very good early detection for any sort of these you know, kidney problems uh, so with us knowing the the problems or the uh, the damages of you know, diabetes and then also the kidney problems so uh, what kind of treatment is available if let's say for those diabetics with you know uh, with kidney problems what kind of uh, options are available for them okay uh, thank you nick um i think i know that you know as a physician usually people expect when we speak about treatment straight away we go to the medicine um mm -hmm. so not necessarily i mean almost every disease that we have we always have a non pharmacological treatment or non um, medical treatment uh, especially when the stage is still in the early phase you know you just been diagnosed with diabetes uh, you want to try whether you can reverse this or not especially you know you have not been looking after your diet properly you have not been looking after your exercise and um, uh, watch out your weight properly so in the initial period yes you may do things uh, that may save um, your diabetes or your blood sugar or lower down your blood sugar without taking any medicine but need, this need uh, 
to be um, overlooked by uh, to be looked after by doctors because you can imagine of course as a patient even for myself if i was diagnosed if i am diagnosed with diabetes then you know you want to try all this exercise but if you don't go for follow up with the doctors then you think that you have successfully managed your diabetes because you exercise but you may not be so always do it under supervision with a doctor so that you know that what you're doing is working um, so if you can go to the slides um so summary slides that i have um so the pyramid okay so starting from below to the top so below means that everybody with a new diagnosis of diabetes they should try these okay exercise stop smoking uh, looking after your diet uh, and then make sure that your blood pressure under control because most patients who has diabetes they do have blood pressure problem as well make sure your sugar is under control know how to check your blood sugar go to the pharmacy caring pharmacy because they can check the blood sugar is it for free nick <laughs> Uh, no, it's not for free. Not for okay, free. so it's, but it's very very affordable. Yeah, so because some people do afraid to check their blood sugar, uh, so yeah, easily we always say to the patient, go and check your blood pressure with the pharmacy. If you have a machine every once in a while, counter check with the pharmacist because you know their 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 blood pressure is at least is um, calibrated, and then just make sure that you calibrate your 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 blood uh, blood pressure with with uh, yeah. the pharmacy. So so. Uh, I think it's good for them to have the machine or if you don't have machine, it's fine. You can always come to the pharmacy for us to check, especially for those who always say, say other machine, tapi saya takut lah, kena cucuk, saya takut, saya datang, saya ada machine. Boleh, tak ada masalah. You can always come to, uh, come to caring pharmacy and then we can check for you. True, yeah. It's, um, I think, uh, one of the, you give power actually when you ask the patient or when the patient has the ability to control or to know how they are doing, like checking blood sugar and checking blood pressure, you really give them control or sense of control that, you know, I can do this, I can control my blood pressure. And even as a doctor, when patient comes with all the list of blood pressure they have done, you know, it's a happy thing because you know they really look after themselves. Yes, because at least they can know, they can see the improvement. When they see the improvement, then it will improve their compliance on their medication. If they cannot really, if they don't monitor, they will just take the medication and then they don't go and see the doctor. Because to them, uh, I will ask, now control it control it say ada makan ubat sometimes to them uh, taking medication means curing the disease yeah. right take medication problem settled so when you have a proper monitoring i think it's very important so that you know they can see the progress oh you know it is not end of the story i have ubat it's not end of the story i still have to follow up with the doctor so i think this is you know very important it's good for doctor to be to be you know uh, emphasizing this here as well um, uh, uh, and also nick uh, if you talk about you know what to do if you're not planning to take medicine yet uh, of course under supervision of doctor there are i think three four things that you can do that definitely can help your diabetes and high blood pressure looking after your diet um, uh, looking after your exercise losing weight um, those three uh, and stop smoking so these four certainly will help anybody who has diabetes and 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 high blood pressure so if you can go to the slides um, uh, weight loss um, over 10%, uh, so they say one kilogram of weight loss will reduce your blood pressure uh, about one millimeter mercury. So that's pretty significant, if, especially if you lose up um, five kilos or something like that. For diabetes, make sure it's not just sugar, all the carbohydrate will turn into sugar, will be changed into sugar. So choose your carbohydrate nicely. Some people believe that, you know, if you take more of a whole grain diet, brown rice, whole meat bread, that may be better for uh, diabetes. So yeah, so some people do do say that. Uh, from from the blood pressure point of view, uh, 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 what is it? Not sugar, salt. Yes, salt intake is very important because in the salt there's a sodium in there. Uh, some people replace the sodium with the potassium salt, and from the blood pressure point of view, point of view that is actually good, uh, potassium salt. Uh, but from the kidney point of view, that may be a bit more risky. Uh, for those who like to exercise, now I think everybody do marathon. I think two years ago before PKP, Kanek, um, uh, everybody do marathon. Or everybody do running. So it's like everybody, everybody do running. And there's one time everybody do cycling. Do you, Nick, cycling? I, I, I'm not a very active person. Uh, so if you ask me, I'm the one who has a high risk of getting hypertension, diabetes. You, you this. look fit enough, Nick. You look fit enough. Mm -hmm now at, at now but we are not but if you are talking about 10 years 20 years that could be a problem really okay so um, exercise yes exercise sometimes like, you don't have to think about i have to run marathon i have to run jogging or whatever it is 
uh, because what we need of course, of course the recommendation is doing it regularly if you can do 30 minutes a day five times a week that would be good but i think we may have some problem for most of us to do 30 minutes of exercise if we don't spend or if we don't dedicate the time to that um so yeah so this is a separation if you plan to do like cycling gardening fast walking dancing you need more time in a week uh, but if you try running and jogging and cycling uphill and those things uh, then you may need only like half of the time of exercise every week i know that it's easy to say i probably did not reach that amount of exercise um, uh, but this is our aim this is what we want to do uh, exercise and look after our diet I think I always feel bad as well, you know. I always tell my patients, hey, you need to exercise, you need to cut down your sugar. But then the next thing I do, I hit the mama. <laughs> so, yeah. But, it's okay. I mean, uh, uh, you can choose the food in mama as well, you know. Uh, in Israel yeah. Rotishana, you can choose. Uh, Tose. What is it? Uh, Tose, Tose. Yeah, Tose. yeah which is a healthy uh, option. Yeah, well. mm -hmm. So, uh, I think we want to talk about a little bit on the medication just now. I think in the slide, uh, can we have can we have the slide? Uh, yeah. On the I think the first one. I think during the first one, you were talking about you no. Know, I think you mentioned about something like SGLT two. That one is something like a newer sort of medication. Um, I think it is good for here uh, for us to emphasize a bit uh, that there is a revision in terms of how we uh, uh, so how how the how uh, how we are recommending our patients to take their medication. So I think for those. Who are who haven't been seeing a doctor for a very long time, like in five years time or three years time, I think it's good for you to see your doctor because uh, you know there are some new medications in the market. So the the medication that you have might be you no know, uh, might not be the best for you. So it is very important for us you know to not go and see a doctor once and then just take the medication for you know, three to five years time. I think it's very important for us to see the doctor every day because your con uh, not every day but you know regularly because uh the medication there are always newer medications coming up and then your body is not the same condition every year and everyone's body changes over year the medication might be good enough for you now but it not but it might not be enough or it might not be good for you uh, not good enough for you uh, three years or five years down the road okay. so yeah agree yeah. agree agree with you nick because we see a lot of patients as well like you say they were given medicine for the patient and then uh, they were given medicine for diabetes or high blood pressure and then just continue the, the, the medicine as if that the, by taking the medicine that's it yeah my blood pressure is cured or my blood pressure is under control diabetes under control not necessarily there are patients who needs one medicine only for diabetes but somehow there are patients who need three medicine for diabetes uh, the most important thing is the blood sugar has to be under control um, so um, in the slides I have now I think um, it depends on you know how technical we want to get uh, basically, there are many medicines for diabetes and for those with a kidney problem, we have two particularly very important. So almost everybody with kidney problem and they have diabetes, uh, the initial, depending on their kidney function, they should be on metformin uh, and they should be on SGLT2 inhibitor. The one that you mentioned, SGLT2 inhibitor, that's the main kind of, a, that's a new medicine that has been shown to reduce kidney problem by 40%. Uh, we cannot reverse the kidney problem, but at least we know we can slow down the progression. Um, so yes, so certainly um, uh, go back to your doctor uh, because this medicine is only, I think, available for the past two years. Um, so it is coming. Uh, people are getting familiar with it. Um, so just know the side effect or potential side effect uh, and, and, and discuss with the doctors of, you know, what's the potential medicine that we can get for those who are um, needing medicine. I think doctor made a good point that you know kidney is sometimes a, a one way one way road so it is very important for them to go and see to go and check with a doctor regularly because the longer you drag the more damage it can you know, uh, the sugar can damage your kidney and sometimes it's really really hard if not impossible for you to you know to reverse back to what it was 10 years ago yeah Okay. The, so, what is it? Uh, hmm. Go on. Can you hear me, doctor? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Can so I? yeah, you're yeah. right. As in, uh, unfortunately, once the kidney is damaged chronically, so the important thing is damaged for a long time. Uh, generally, we doctors would say it's unlikely for the kidney to get better again. Uh, there may be a slightly fluctuation um, of the kidney function, but if your kidney is already, let's say, twenty percent for a long time, chronic, not just happened just now. 20% for a long time, it is unlikely for the 20% to become 60%. Um, uh, 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 yes. 
So yeah, so that's, that's the also, important thing. Yeah, that's why it's also very dangerous for them. A lot, of, a lot of people they will they go to and see a doctor. Doctor will give them medication, and they will come to us say. Oh, saya tak nak ambil ubat lah. Sebab uh, ubat ni tak baik untuk buah pinggang. Ubat ni tak baik untuk badan. Kalau kalau lepas saya dah start ubat, saya kena continue makan sampai saya mati. So this kind this kind of thing is you know what we hear every day. And some of the time they will they will they will say I want to try this thing. I want to try that thing. I want to try with this down that down this poko that poko. So uh, so what is your opinion on this? Is it possible for them to stop their medication first and then? Go on something else and then come back. Is 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 it the right thing to do? Okay, if you allow me to kind of explain a little bit, if I can, could use the slides. Um, uh, it is true there are a lot of patients who are afraid that uh, when they take medicine, it can destroy the kidney. And and not only uh, layman or not only layperson, even doctors sometimes think that certain medicine or most medicine may destroy the kidney because the kidney has to work extra hard or something like that. Uh, now, if I could give a comparison, uh, um, uh, because I, I usually tell my patient or I explain my patient a little bit. If you compare a, a newly diabetes patient who has um, a high blood sugar, you know, we have uh, Pa'ali and uh, Pa'atan. So both have a newly diagnosed diabetes. Pa'ali was given medicine to control the blood sugar. Pa'atan did not take anything and let just the sugar loose, okay? So the idea is if the condition or if the kidney problem is because of a medicine, then we would expect which one will get the kidney first? Because Pa'ali because he was given the medicine. But in actual life, you know, what really happened in life, Pa'atan who did not take the medicine and allow the kidney function or allow the diabetes to be not controlled, these are the patients that will develop complication first. Hence, I would say or I would argue that the complication, the kidney problem, the eye problem that patient have, mainly it is because of the disease itself and not necessarily because of a medication. This is as if like, you know, somebody who are very well, bila pension, they just go to the hospital and then they were diagnosed with all sorts of things, diabetes, lah, hypertension, whatever. And then they say, oh, it's because I go to the hospital. That's why I have diabetes and hypertension. Why we know that's not quite true, uh, uh, because the patient may have it for quite some time. Yeah, I think, but I think medication is always about risk and benefit. They will ask me, uh, would this medication damage my kidney? I said, likely not. But if you don't take it, you are very likely to get to get you know kidney problem. So, if you don't take it, I think the the point is risk and benefit. If you don't take it, you will you will be highly likely to be getting it. So this is what I always you know, emphasize to my to, to, to patients. Uh, uh, always weighing uh, risk and benefit is always choosing between two. So it will be quite clear here like, when, when it comes to you know, diabetic medication, you take it, uh, it can help you to control your sugar, it can help you to control your you know, kidney problems. If you don't take it, then definitely within five years or 10 years, your, your condition will be you know, sliding down very quick. Uh, follow up, Nick. I mean, nowadays, you know, uh, although we say once you are on medicine for diabetes, you may be on it for lifelong. But there are patients who basically, you know, has diabetes, uh, were given di uh, medication, and then they look after your di their diet, lose weight, uh, uh, um, controlling their diet, salt diet, sugar diet, uh, uh, and then exercise as well. Some of them do manage to bring down the blood sugar to the extent that they may not need medication anymore so but then you know you cannot do this on your own you really have to have doctors who can look after or check your blood sugar check your hba1c properly so that they know that what you're doing is right and continue what you're doing is right mm -hmm. um i think we have uh we have quite some slides with us i think with us uh regarding the regarding the you know uh myths right uh, uh, yeah yeah sure up? Uh, we also like to uh, address certain myths, uh, you know, on the diabetics, uh, whether you know this thing works or whether that thing works. So I think Miss Sai Kuching is one of them. Miss Sai Kuching, I think a lot of patients will tell me, "Uh, tak apa lah, ubat tak payah makan dulu lah. Saya nak cuba Miss Sai Kuching dulu." <laughs> so, uh, what so what would be your your response to to, to this? Of course, uh, I I try to be fair. Um, so I try not to shut down this medicine, uh, but also cannot encourage people to take this because there's not much um, evidence behind it. So what we know now, I think I got this from the MOH um, website. So these are the 
uh, what they call not potential these are the medication that in that may have been shown in a, a lab study or an animal study that may help in reducing blood sugar right uh, however you have to be aware that uh, in 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 the in a, a pharmaceutical kind of a industry uh, it will take years if i could show you yeah so it will take years for development of um, a certain medicine um, and out of one when you when you found let's say you found sglt2 inhibitor as a very good diabetes medicine there are like hundreds of other potential medicine that did not see the light of an end of the tunnel because of many problems you know they they start with something and then they have a extra toxicity they start with something but it's not beneficial enough they start with something so you know we have to undergo all these trials in order for us to say yes that's beneficial hence i would say that uh, this medicine are potential because these medicine are not available in other countries so it is up to us doctors and pharmacists and uh, pharmacologists and researchers to 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 put this into practice as in you know uh, maybe one of them may be beneficial in many many years to come that has been shown but at the at this particular moment we cannot really encourage people to take this because we don't know number one is that we don't know whether it's effective or not and number two even if potentially they may be effective we don't know what's the side effect of this because we know that everything has their potential side effect if i could draw your attention uh, nick uh, examples of traditional medicine has become modern medicine right so previously people use it as a traditional medicine but now people use it in the modern clinical medicine for example most of anti-cancer medicine or uh, they originate from plants and you can you can read there I, I don't know how to pronounce it cut cataranthus resist <laughs> yeah. but now it has been christine yeah, vincristine is a very common uh, anti-cancer drug, okay? But you have to undergo research in order for you to reach at this conclusion. Even the SGLT2 inhibitor that you mentioned just now, originally it's coming from the bark of an apple tree, okay? So the European people, they were probably taking bark of apple tree, mix it, whatever it is. But we know uh, if you take the bark of apple tree now and eat it, you probably have a lot of diarrhea because... Uh, the, the, the inside there, there, there are properties of SGL, SGLT2, but there are also SGLT1 in there, and that can cause diarrhea. So you see, we need this research so that we know what are the side effects. We can change the molecule a little bit and then make it safer so that people can benefit from it. So I'm not saying that all this traditional medicine certainly has no values at all, because in the future, they may have but we need to the research. We need re, we really need the research to know whether it's working or not, it's beneficial or not or not. Uh, so for the time being, I really cannot recommend those just because we don't have enough evidence for this um, um, uh, traditional medicine. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes I, for me as pharmacy, I'm still keeping quite. I'm still keeping it open. I will give them the option to to stop your medication over. You know, like a misakuching tea. You want to think misakuching tea to me? It's okay. But to stop your medication and then just you know, chuck it aside, I think that would be a bit too much right? because definitely you don't expect uh, a missile coaching tea to be, let's say, you know, having the same medication as, let's say, metformin, SGLT2. That one would be definitely out, out of the question. Uh, um, because, so before, uh, yeah, because they probably think that missile coaching probably not much of a side effect medicine when they when they have blisters and things like that, you know, more associated with more side effect. But yeah, we don't know. To be honest, yeah. yeah. Uh, sure. I also tell patient Nick. I, I also kind of a democratic. I, I don't tell patient do not take it, but I tell them that I don't have evidence. But if you take it, you probably have to buy it. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, you probably lose money as long as it doesn't cause more harm. Which I don't know whether it's cause more harm. It will cause more harm or not. So yeah. So at the end of the day, <laughs> simple answer from me. I really don't know, but it's a risk that you have to be willing to take. Yeah, but sometimes I also leave it leave it to you, but I will, but I will, because sometimes for 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 a pharmacist or doctor to tell them right off not to not to take it, they will likely you know they will just don't don't listen to to you, right? But mm -hmm. uh, when we leave it open to them, at least we discuss with them, then they will at least you know oh okay, uh we can discuss you know we can discuss so at least oh you know I will take this together with medication. At least it's not that bad. At least uh, as compared to they outright you know stop the medication, yeah. So uh. I think uh, that's a very good response from the doctor so that we know 
uh, where all of this you know, herbal, herbal, herbal treatment stands as compared to the you know, med, uh, medication. Uh, before we move on to the question, I think we have quite a lot of questions with us. Before we move on to the Q&A session, uh, I think it is time for us to talk about the micro test. Uh, because I think Doctor talked about the micro test just now, right? The early detection, you know, detecting the protein in the so in the urine. So I want to talk a little bit about the test because you can actually get a, a free micro test. So maybe I will just uh, uh, quickly go through how you can get a free micro test. Uh, can can someone put up the slides? Yeah. So um, you can actually go to this www.beyondsugar.my. Uh, there will be a chat board that will be able to advise you. Yeah, this chat board is very chunky one. Okay, so you just press, you see the chat board there, right? You can just press the chat board and then they will ask you, you know, regarding the risk factor, whether you have you know, heart problem, whether you have kidney problem, then you can just pick one option after another. Then they will lead you and let you know whether you need a micro test and then where you can get a micro test. Uh, maybe next slide, please. Yeah, this is the chatbot. Yeah, you can. They will ask you one by one. Uh. Next. Oh, they ask you what do you what can you do? Okay. Yeah. This, like, okay, yeah. What can you do? Yeah, yeah it's quite so. That's so. That's chunky. You see here. Uh, just now, I was actually uh, actually tried. You can actually go in. You know, whether you have diabetes and then you no, know, uh, whether you have hypertension, your cholesterol. You can just put it, and then they will actually calculate the risk for you. So okay. if the the bot, the 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 the, the chatbot determine that you know you are actually high at risk. Uh, after you key in your, they will ask you for your kidney function. They will ask you for your blood pressure. They will ask you for your you know, cholesterol. Uh, so whether you have cholesterol problems. Uh, after you key in everything, uh, they will let you know whether you are at high risk. And then if you are determined to be high risk, they will ask you a postcode. Once you key in the postcode, no, the the bot won't come and visit you at your house. So <laughs> don't worry. You can just key in the postcode. Will do. The the postcode is actually for 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 them to search for the clinics that are nearby your house. Uh, that's offering the micro test so it's actually a free micro test so don't worry we will not go to your house just key in the postcode and then they will advise you on which clinic that you can go does this apply to whole malaysia or something like that uh, nick do you know um i don't think it's oh, really depends. it's a bit hard to to reach certain parts of the country <laughs> <laughs> if you're talking about, you know, uh, in the in those like, very very rural areas, then I think it, that would be a bit tough. But it's okay. You can just try this key in. Uh, uh they will let you know what the oh, nearest. So, so for example, is. you have that three nearest clinic that run free. Yeah, market. correct. Yeah, I key in my you know, postcode. They will they will let me know which which one that I can go. Uh, uh yeah. the audience need to know this is a special kind of a uh, uh dipstick to check the protein, not just the ordinary protein that you buy from the yes. pharmacy. This is like micro, a very minute protein even they can detect. And that's a risk factor for you to get heart disease. So by having it, yeah. um, uh, there will be, uh, there will be it. Uh, there are actually, there are actually 700 clinics nationwide. So it's quite wow. widely available. So don't have to worry that you have to you know, drive all the way from Pahang until KL. No, 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 no. You don't have to do that. Uh, it is quite, it is quite, it is quite, you know, it's quite. Uh, 700, yeah, 700 is about, so that means if you divide by 14, uh, I'm bad at math. <laughs> 60, 60 <laughs> clinics every, every state roughly. So that's, that's yeah. Okay. So, uh, so uh, this will be the QR, the QR code. You can just scan and then they will bring you right to the Beyond Sugar website. Okay. Oh. Uh, what's the name of the website again, Nick? Uh, beyond sugar beyond sugar eh? okay. yeah www.beyondsugar.my uh, i think we were talking about the albumin right and so for, for those who are a bit confused on albumin protein uh, albumin is basically one type of the protein but it's a protein that is you know that is the most common found in the urine so it is actually more sensitive as compared to the normal protein the protein test so it will be a very good and very sensitive test uh, for those people who are diabetic or if you have concern of you know uh, kidney problems so it's good for you to get a check so that you can get a peace of mind uh, okay so now uh with that uh, done we will be talking about the next giveaway the second round of giveaway i just mentioned it like 30 seconds ago the question is which website mention provides a free micro test okay which website mention uh, provides a free micro test. Is it A, www.abovesugar.my, B, www.beyondsugar.my, or C, www.belowsugar.my? So, you know, same thing, comment your uh, answer in the comment section. Three of lucky winners will be getting the 
uh, carrying cash voucher worth 50 ringgit. Lah. So uh, do remember to like Caring Pharmacy, like and share the live stream. And if you want to increase your chance of winning, tag three of your friends or family. Okay, uh, now we will be moving on with the Q&A session. We have a lot of questions with us, Doctor. I think they are really, really passionate about this topic today. I think because a lot of people, they have a sure concerns of uh, a huge chunk of Malaysians are actually diabetic and they are actually always worried about risk of amputation, risk of kidney. So uh, I think that's why they are so passionate today. So um, I think, okay, the first question, is stress also trigger diabetic? Is stress a trigger of diabetes? Hmm. Not that I know of directly, but if you think about it, if you stress and you like to overcome your stress by eating, cakes and desserts and yeah so those uh, behavior may uh, may have contributed to the diabetes itself uh, now as regard to the blood pressure however um, uh, we know that when you're stressed your uh, your 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 blood vessels are all kind of a constrict you know uh, flight and fight response so yeah in that particular situation you may have a high blood pressure and you can imagine if you have a stress over a long period of time, then your blood pressure may be elevated for a long period of time. That may not be good for you. Yeah, I think not only on eating. When I'm stressed, I have to, I have to drink a cup of you know sugary drink. We uh, eat coffee, we eat coke. Uh, maybe it, some people are stressed and they run. Maybe that's a better idea. Is there anyone like that? I I I, I think most of them. Uh, will, yeah, I know somebody like people. that though. I know somebody oh, like that. Not me, unfortunately. Okay. And that, uh, I think that is the rare. I think more people will be like me. Lah. Coffee first. We can think about it later. I'm serious. Coffee first. So, yeah. So, the next question. Uh, doctor, can you please explain the connection between diabetics and kidney diseases? You know, why diabetics leads to kidney diseases? I think for a lot of them, they find it like two completely different concepts. Diabetics is sugar. Why does the sugar can make your kidney damage? Okay. So I think there are uh, people are still kind of uh, researching about this. Um, I think there are two possibly through kind of a uh, two pathway that I can explain to you. Number one is like the blood vessels. Okay. So when you have a high blood sugar in the blood vessels itself, so everywhere the blood vessels that has been exposed to blood sugar will undergo some changes to accommodate that high blood sugar. And that changes of the blood vessels basically is harmful to the blood vessels. And when the blood vessels are constricted you know the blood flow cannot go through easily so that is when you have damage uh, a redu reduction of blood supply to the kidney to the brain to the heart and all sorts of things so that's one of the mechanism and number two is that i think as a nephrologist when we do a kidney biopsy meaning taking a sample of a kidney in somebody with diabetes what we see basically the 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 the, the nephron or the functioning unit of a kidney is just become sclerosed meaning you know the, the whole thing is 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 not functioning and we suspect that's again because of the reaction to the high blood sugar that the patient has so it is a reaction or inflammation to to having a high blood sugar uh, in our body mm -hmm. um, and not only kidney it's other organs as well mm -hmm. uh, i think this is a question that doctor has uh, mentioned uh, but I think it's good for doctor to explain again on this uh, from Selena Liu. Yeah? Taking too much medicine and supplements is also taxing on the kidneys. Uh, what is Prof's opinion? Um, I would say I will start from the beginning. Why do you want to take those medicine? Or why do you want to take those supplements? Because um, I'm sure you have, um, you're aware of, you know, different discussions happening. Uh, with the fruits and vegetables that we take, generally speaking, that should be enough for our supplements of vitamins and minerals. Uh, so we technically do not need to take extra vitamins or supplements unless we having certain condition that requires us to take all those things. So yeah, so number one, we go to the back, uh, the original question, why do we need to take that? And if you need to take those, uh, then technically I think we have to kind of think a little bit of which supplements may be safer than which supplements, uh, which are the supplements. For example, you know, if you go to the pharmacy and take multivitamins, and I think with the KKM logo and everything, multivitamins that's con that contains in all the, all the, all the, all the, all the food that we take, so less likely for it to cause much of a problem. But if you go and take certain traditional herbal medicine that's not usually a, a something from the food, uh, then that may be a bit more risky. Yeah. So um, I myself, I, I I try to avoid those. Yeah. When it comes to supplements, I think 
uh, don't just get it from uh, online or you know, any sort of, you know, uh, make sure it is approved by KKM, make sure that it is, you know, through a valid channel and not those that you can, you can just buy on, let's say any sort of online, online, online portal, heard, you know, Nick, Facebook, think, Facebook, there's yeah. a lot of Facebook. True. Have yeah. you heard, Nick? I mean, most of the, um, not most, I mean, certain, uh, those who are not, um, uh, was sold online or whatever it is in order for it to be effective. So they know that certain medicine is effective. For example, the painkiller, the NSAIDs, the Voltaren or whatever, you know. Um, so those things are effective and steroids are effective for many conditions. So they just lump everything together, put into the pill and call the pill something else. And then yeah. that's when it becomes dangerous. I think the, I think this, I think steroid would be one of the common things because mm -hmm. steroid is something that, you know, it's a very strong medication. Sometimes it can have some side effect, but if you're having some pain or whatnot, where you take it in, yeah, the effect it, it is, is very, very, very effective. Be it sore throat, be it pain, any sort of inflammation. Uh, when they take it, they will, they will see instant result, right? So to them, they are taking something that is natural without side effect and at the same time effective. But little did they know, actually, they're actually taking some very strong medication now that you that you should not be taking under the supervision or you know, uh, unless it's prescribed by a doctor. I think that would be uh, the, the, the main thing. There are a lot of like the so-called traditional medication that they actually, you know, uh, inside they put, they, you know, they put in the steroids. So, yeah. So make sure that if you want to take it, it's, uh, it's through a proper channel. Uh, maybe let us go to the next question. Um, so, uh, how to reduce the side effect and dependency on the diabetes medication? I think it. I think a lot of patients are still having the 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 the, the same yeah, thing, yeah. right? The dependency, side effect. I think this again are the things that they are very uh, taxing on kidney. These are these are the things that you know, they are worried. Especially, I think during the slide just now, it is actually mentioned there are a lot of uh, side effects. That is why they are asking this uh, you know, this question. Um, now, as doctors or as physician and pharmacists. Uh, we basically have to be honest because, you know, we're not like selling online where, oh, please take this medicine. It's very good for you. We'll, you know, uh, uh, obliterate all your diabetes and hypertension. Uh, we have to tell patients what are the good thing and what are the potential risks. Potential risk does not mean that you will get it. Potential risk means that, yeah, you, some people may have it and then we can change the medicine if that happens. Um, and, and yeah, so the idea of taxing on the kidney or taxing on the liver, God created our, our liver and kidney to, to, to overcome many kind of a toxins that we eat or production that we eat. So, you know, some medicine, um, certainly we should be able to overcome that. I want to add on, I think I would again like to emphasize on the things about risk and benefit. I think, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, like as example for me, right, one of, uh, one of the risks would be, you know, you know gastro, you know, stomach issues. I think comparing the side effect of you know stomach issues as compared to uh, amputation, as compared to kidney problems, compared to heart problems, blindness, I think the risk and benefit is very clear. Lah. So for medication to be approved, to be recommended by doctors, it would have definitely be weighed the risk and benefit. There is a reason why the doctor is asking you to take this. It is definitely uh, more likely than not, it is that you need it. The, the 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 benefit is there so the risk is uh, worth taking yeah so uh i think that is all for today um so thank you everyone uh, who have uh, joined this uh facebook live and thank you dr one half uh, one Ahmad hafiz for sharing your really extensive knowledge on diabetes on your kidney and on your job so uh, as for viewers anticipating the giveaway winner uh, announcement be sure to keep an eye on caring's facebook page as we will be announcing the winners uh, you know, sometime soon uh, once again thank you for joining us uh, and see you again in the next live stream bye bye thank you, thank you. i want to go